as we're all aware, patients with triple negative breast cancer who get knee artery chemotherapy and achieve what we call a pathological complete response, which means the complete disappearance of the cancer prior to surgery. They have a sustained clinical benefit. The meta-analysis data that show a strong link between PATH-CR and long-term outcome for long-term event-free survival with a hazard ratio of 0.24 and overall survival with a hazard ratio of 0.16. We know if you give knee chemotherapy with anthracyclines and taxanes, the PATH-CR rates are around 40%. If you add in platinum, they're around 50 to 55%. And we have, prior to this study, smaller trials that demonstrated that if you add pembrolizumab or other checkpoint inhibitors to knee chemotherapy, that the treatment is safe and show promising early activity in triple negative breast cancer. So we designed a phase three trial, Keynote 522, in patients with operable triple negative breast cancer with either T1C tumors and node positive disease or T2 to T4 tumors, irrespective of the nodal status. Patients were randomized between pembrolizumab or placebo given in combination with 12 weeks of carboplatin paclitaxel chemotherapy followed by 12 weeks of AC or EC chemotherapy. Patients then underwent surgery, and after surgery, they carried on with pembrolizumab or with placebo for a total of one year. The trial had two main primary endpoints, and at this point in time, we have mature data and definitive data for the first primary endpoint, PATH-CR, the complete disappearance of all cancer. We also have early data for event-free survival, but the follow-up is very short at this point in time. If you look at the definitive PATH-CR data based on 602 patients, it is a statistically significant and, in my opinion, meaningful difference in PATH-CR rates of 13.6% between the two groups, with 51.2% PATH-CR in patients receiving the control chemotherapy and 64.8% of patients receiving chemotherapy and pembrolizumab. With a short, and this is short for, for, from an adjuvant point of view, follow-up of only 15.5 months, we see a separation of the curves, but not statistically significant at this point in time, considering the pre-calculated p-value boundary of significance of 0.00051. We have an estimated difference in the estimated 18 months uh, event-free survival rates of 19.3% to 85.3% in the placebo group. If you look at the benefit in terms of PATH-CR by different disease stages, and the trial included patients with stage 2 disease and stage 3 disease, as you can see consistently across all stages, there's a benefit from adding immune therapy to chemotherapy. But what is impressive, in my opinion, is looking at the right side of the slide where you see patients with stage 3A and stage 3B, in other words, higher risk cancers, where the delta, the difference in PATH-CR rates is around 25% for stage 3A and stage 3B patients. Obviously, in the control arm, because these are higher risk patients, we see that the path CR rate is going down, but we maintain a high path CR rate in patients with the addition of prembolizumab. If you look at patients with and without lymph node involvement, again, lymph node involvement being associated with a higher risk, also associated with lower path CR rates, we can see that there's a consistent benefit in patients who are on the left lymph node negative on the right, lymph node positive. But I would again like to point out that patients with higher risk disease have a difference of a benefit of 20.6% from the addition of prembolizumab to chemotherapy. One of the key questions is, do all patients benefit equally from, from uh, immune therapy? And one of the markers in metastatic disease that's linked with response is something called the pdl one status. Now, we checked this out in, in, in this trial using an, an assay called CPS, and patients who were uh, defined as CPS less than 1 are PDL1 negative. Patients who are more than CPS or CPS higher than 1 are PDL1 positive. And in case you can see on the left side of the slide, patients with PDL1 negative tumors as per, per this definition have a similar benefit from the addition of immune therapy to chemotherapy compared to patients with PDL1 positive patients. We also looked, because other studies showed if patients have a very high expression of PDL1 and have very immunogenic tumors, they may have an, an even higher benefit of immune therapy. And we wondered whether most of the benefit was driven by this group. But as you can see, the absolute difference in, 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 in the delta between chemotherapy and the combination is consistent whether we use a cutoff of 1, of 10, or 20. Of note, if you look at the group of patients with a CPS of 10, so more inflamed tumors, or CPS of 20, we saw a path CR rate of 78% and 
and 81% in these patients, a POSCR we have never seen in such an uh, aggressive disease group. One of the questions we, that, that came up when we first discussed the trial results was, was the chemotherapy exposure possibly different and, and, and affected by the addition of immune therapy? And we saw that that if you have very stringent definitions of what is full dose of chemotherapy, approximately 80% of patients in each arm had full exposure of chemotherapy. If we look at, and this is an exploratory analysis, if you look at the PATH-CR in patients who had full exposure of chemotherapy or patients who had less than full exposure of chemotherapy, we again see the difference or the benefit from adding pembrolizumab is around 14% for full exposure, 15% for less than full exposure, meaning that the benefit from adding immune therapy is maintained even in those patients who, for whatever reason it was, received less than full exposures of chemotherapy. So our summary at this point in time is that the addition of pembrolizumab to neoadjuvant chemotherapy produces a significant and substantial benefit in PATH-CR rates, and we see a larger magnitude of the PCR benefits versus chemotherapy alone in patients with higher stage disease, in this instance stage 3 disease, a node positive <coughs> disease. We also saw that the benefit of neoadjuvant chemotherapy and pembrolizumab on PATH-CR was observed in patients who received less than the planned chemotherapy, although, of course, the absolute PATH-CR rates were lower in those patients who received less than chemotherapy, and also irrespective of the PDL1 threshold, the CPS threshold for the assay used in this trial. Neoadjuvant pembrolizumab and chemotherapy was associated with a higher rate of RCB01, data we'll show later this morning. And we'll see that immune-mediated adverse events were consistent with the known profiles of each regimen, and we didn't see any new safety concerns. We feel at this point in time that further follow-up is needed to confirm the EFS benefit, and we also need longer-term safety profile data. We also present in the future additional biomarker data, which I think will be helpful, including TILS and BRCA1 status. Thank you very much.